estate investor, been in the game for a long time now, and also owns a, uh, uh, he and his wife own a company called Riva Global Virtual Assistant, something like that, right, Bob? Is that the right <laughs> name? <laughs> you, na you nailed it. You nailed it. Good. Yeah, so I want to make sure people know. So I want to, we're going to, we're going to learn about it. So Bob will chance for today. Welcome, buddy. Glad to have you. Ah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So tell us a little about you. So you're connected. You've been in the game for a while. And then I want to hear about how you do things now with your virtual assistants and that company and all that kind of stuff. Sure. It started back in 2004. That's a real estate investment. Uh, I was first a real estate investor, played professional hockey prior to that for eight years. So had a little good run in uh, Wait, professional hockey. Yeah. Yep. Really? Uh, I didn't know that. Yep. So prior to that, I went to Boston University. We had some pretty good teams, won the national championship uh, one year. I think I was in the Frozen Four, which is the final four. To put in context for everybody, three out of my four years, I believe. So we had a pretty good run. I got offered a contract. I got drafted by the St. Louis Blues, got offered a contract. I played in their minor league team for two years. And then I went uh, a couple different teams that I signed with here in the United States and then four more years in Europe and then uh, decided to throw in the white, the white towel and, you know, yeah. join a, an industry that I didn't need a degree in because I left two classes short of my degree. Wow. <laughs> and, you, and you have all your teeth. I mean, you're a good looking guy. You have all your teeth. That one's is... fake. This, this one is fake. If you look close. Okay. This one's fake. <laughs> I was gonna say it's usually that's part of the game, right? Well, actually, oh, funny wow. story. My first, if you next time I see you down, I, if you guys are gonna be, in, if you guys are in Arizona, my first pro shift, I took my mask off. I took, got a slap shot right between the eyes. So I, yeah. Mm -hmm. right, so. <laughs> so welcome, welcome to professional hockey. That's what I got. <laughs> wow. All right, so professional hockey player. Let's how do, how do we get to real estate professional investing? Professional hockey player turned uh, turned real estate investor. There it is. Well, it, it was very simple for me. It was either I had to go back to school, finish two classes, or I was going to go into an industry that needed zero barriers of entry. So, read a lot. You know, towards the end of my career, I was reading a lot. Read Rich Dad Poor Dad, all that kind of good stuff. I uh, bought a, a course, David Wisnet. I think he's still in the game right now. He's an attorney, um, but it was all about real estate, but all about nothing in particular. So. Um, at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm a real estate investor. I don't, have to, I don't want to have to go back to school. So, you know, I put a, I put a flag in the ground and said I was a real estate investor. I had no idea what a real estate investor was, but hey, you know what? Why not? So, yeah. uh, you, I got in the car. It's actually that funny. Now, or do you ever regret it? Not, not doing those. So, two classes isn't a big deal. Do you ever regret? Two classes, not a. You, you know, it's funny. Um, the reason why I did not go back is because I did not want, um, I did not want a fallback position. Because they have a fallback position. You know, being in sports all the time, I was always looking for the next contract. So I'm like, you know what? If I had a fallback position, then you know, I would go back and, and work in corporate America, which you know, I'm kind of kind of unemployable, if you will, because you know, I was always just the type of person who um, you know wanted to work with a team, but not for somebody. It's funny. Uh, it's funny. You, it's yeah. It's funny you said it because I've I've actually read you know. You should not have a plan B. I've never really had a plan B. I just yeah. have a plan A. That's what I go for. If you have a plan B, you're right. It's so easy yeah. to go. Because, you know, like a hockey player, I mean, you're getting the crap kicked out of you in business. You just do. It depends yeah. yep. on what you pick. But real estate investing is not easy. And if you have a fallback well, position, you might go, ah, geez, this, I had a kind of a rough quarter. You know what? Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll just have a job. right? You have, but if you don't have that fallback right. position, nothing. Yeah, that's exactly. Cool. You know, it's funny. Our plan B now, is starting to buy and hold like that's our plan b yeah. to where if the big wholesale fees are all those aren't coming in you still have passive income here so that that is our plan b i guess yes, right? yeah, okay. yeah same thing yeah. yeah so uh anyway fast forward so i uh jumped into real estate i uh did a fix and flip my first deal uh, made 32 grand which is pretty cool and then uh, i realized i had zero systems obviously you know you have incredible coaching programs and there was no coach. This is back in 2004. So I knew, at least you got to realize, I knew nothing. So yeah. I joined a re, uh, local real estate investment association and uh, I saw speakers speak on pre foreclosure, which are short sales. And uh, again, this is back in 2004. Um, so at that point now, guess what? I'm not a fix and flip guy anymore. I'm a short sale dude, right? Just because I was going to get swayed anywhere. And then uh, next, uh, next meeting, I said, who is the best person in Connecticut uh, to do short sales? And they all pointed, you know, Pat Precourt, they all pointed to Pat. I walked up to Pat and said, Pat, dude, I'm not looking for a job. I'm not looking, you know, not looking for a paycheck, but I'm looking to join the team. I said, you know, you have any openings? He's like, you know what? I'm looking for a door knocker. And I'm like, all right. So I door knocked for a year straight. Really? 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday, every oh. freaking day. And I don't recommend anybody does it 
it absolutely sucks. But back in the day, you had to. We didn't have, yeah. you know, we didn't have text messaging. We didn't have all that crap. So yeah, yeah. So that's how I got started. Wow, that's pretty impressive, man. Door, that's no. How long did you do that for? A year? I, a year? I did that for a year, and then I pulled myself out. And uh, Pat taught me, you know, negotiating with banks and all that kind of stuff. And I put someone else in my spot as a door knocker. And then we just grew from there. We created a, a, a short cell flagship system course. We then we created an education program back in yeah. the day with uh, yeah with the uh, short cell side. And then we helped start Fortune Builders at the back end of the coaching program. Pat and I. And then you know from yeah. that turned into. Uh, yeah, investing and doing I all that. I got that respect for you, brother. I didn't know you put yeah. that, that kind of time in. That's awesome. I'm curious. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you've done the PI index. What was your profile? I am a Maverick. Maverick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> that's right. So we could get beat up and keep going. Perfect. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's fantastic, right. man. When somebody says no, that just means the conversation's getting started. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. I love, I love we had Gary Harper here in our company. He goes, he, he described my personality and said, you know, to this person in my company, when you say no, she just, she, she assumes no is no. And that's it. She goes, when you say no to Glenn, he's like, we're just getting started talking now. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly right. So, yeah. that's, hey, we, we also have Gary in, in our real estate office over here. So okay, uh, we're in the middle of it right now. We just had a meeting today with uh, Hannah, I think her name is. Oh, is he actually so there good. now? Is Gary actually with you right he's, now? No, he's not here. No, he's not here right now, but we just had a, we had him in. We had Brand uh, McCurdy in, yep. I can't remember, probably about a month ago. And then, yeah. uh, so we're just doing our daily stuff. We have Brian Snyder come in in October. So, yeah. uh, so for the people nice. listening, we should explain what that is. That's true. Yeah, if you're listening. So so we we all hire we all hire a company called Sharper. It's a, it's a, it's really a, a company that comes in and really helps you run your business, really just helps you get your systems in place and manage your, helps you manage your people. And so it's a quarterly you uh, accountability, you. yeah, company that's really been, been a yeah. game for us so it's been great yeah it's it's coaching for us too right when your business yeah. hits a certain level right you have you guys have an incredible coaching program right but after let's say two three four years once you're in the mix of it harper or sharper is a, a great it's he's he's incredible he's got an incredible company i tell you what's funny is too just yesterday somebody put on a post it was a you know we we charge 59 bucks for our home flipping workshop we charge next to nothing to come to our workshop yeah. for three days. so um somebody put why why should i pay and i I want to write back and go, are you an idiot? Like, why would you, why should you pay? I'm like, you pay, if you want to learn from people, you have to invest in yourself. And I'm laughing. I'm yeah. thinking you're, you'll never be successful. I don't even know yeah. who that person is, but I'm yeah. sure he's not. But like we do, we invest in that kind of stuff. So, so that person's an absolute idiot. I mean, you look at, think about this, but think about it. It's kind of like if you win the lottery, right? You know, for me personally, I got a full scholarship to college. You think I really gave a shit about going to school? Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Right. I didn't have to pay for it. I got it for free. So that's, People right. lottery. That's why they're broke after X amount of years when they get yeah. something for free. It's just so if someone doesn't want to pay for something to your to your workshop, think about how much time and energy you put into creating this three day workshop. Like, are you kidding me? Oh, oh yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. blood, sweat, and tears, it, it just, baby. It just yeah. cracked me up. So you, you can tell we've been in business for a long time when we when we're when we're open to say, listen, you're an idiot if you don't want to pay for something. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I would love for you to share with the listeners what Reva does for the real estate industry. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So Reva, I started my first uh, virtual assistant company back in 2014, then uh, Reva came about in 2018. Uh, but it, it's it's all running tasks. So so for instance, so for me personally, um, as an investor, I door knocked for. Jeez, for a year straight, right? But we don't have to do that anymore. Now, lead generation, as an example, it's cold calling, text messaging, skip tracing, transaction coordinating. We have property managers that use our service for leasing, lease renewals. So it's all tasks. You look at what you do. If you grab your, your calendar and you say, all right, um, I'm looking at all the tasks I do on a daily basis. And if I'm still doing $10 an hour tasks, that typically equates to $10 an hour bank account, right? Or $10 because that, that's what you start looking at. Heard that from my buddy, Gary. So I'm, I'm ripping that off. So Gary, that's your quote. But um, it's true. It's every task that you can do through a computer or a phone, you could outsource it. And, and looking at all the costs associated with individuals here in the United States, um, all, my, all my virtual assistants are the Philippines. The cost over there is a heck of a lot lower um, than it is here. I know I live in Connecticut. So if I have to hire someone with a four-year college degree, I mean, it's going to be fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. If you look at a virtual assistant; it's in the twenties. So you can get two, three virtual assistants for the cost of one graduate here in the United States. And again, I know every state's different with you know with those numbers, yeah. but 
Um, minimum wage well, going up. Our listeners should know too. I, I don't know how many we use of yours now. I think we yeah. have three or four, maybe three or four. You're, you, ju- you just sent in a request for an add on too. <laughs> for another I thought so. Yeah. I, we don't, we're not, we're not involved in our day to day of our company there in New York, but, but I know that I know we've been having a lot of success and, and mm-hmm. they're hard work. I think people sometimes think, Oh, well, how good could they be there? Versus there, there's some, we've had, we've had Alan on our team, I think. Three, 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 two, two, two years now. Two years, two years. Yep. We, we actually sent him money because his child hadn't had surgery. We raised a little money for him time. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, just to help out. But I, but I think, I think it's important that we dispel some, you know, maybe preconceived ideas because we've all had that experience where we call, you know, customer service at yeah, some right. big company. Yeah. <laughs> we can't understand the person on the other line. Yeah. So yep. let, let's dispel some of the the myths there. Depends yeah, on it's actually true, right? right. That's yeah. right. That's right. And, and all, like I said, all of our virtual assistants are the Philippines. And a lot of people don't know that English is one of their main languages. So yeah. that's first of all, and they, now they grow up in the, in the call center world. So they're always being steered when they're younger, um, either, either being a nurse in the medical field or being in the, they call it BPO industry, which is call center industry. So they're getting more educated and in, in better accents younger now rather than the older right. generation. So that's a very good trend, obviously, for all of us here. Um, and here's the thing, and we were talking about this before we got on. Um, my office, I have my uh, virtual assistant office here, and I have my real estate office there. We did over 160 transactions. Last year, we're set to do, I think, over, I got to ask Adam, who's my real estate business partner, over 225, I think. And right. our virtual assistants run so much stuff in our business to lead generation, to help them with TC, to help them with follow-up, to scrubbing, to skip tracing, et cetera. So they do a lot of stuff for us, um, which allows them just to concentrate on closing deals and, and getting things sold. And many of them are highly educated as well. I mean, we, yep. have, we have one girl on our team that does some bookkeeping work for us, and she has a whole team that works under her. And yep. She does some Excel spreadsheets for us. That in we we yeah. couldn't even get to LA. Oh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Half the stuff that the team does, I can't do. Right. right. Because it's it's just the way it is. You know, we all have our, our different skill sets, but um, yeah, they're all four year college educated. So we it's go maybe, through popular opinion. But I almost find that a lot of times, given the right person in the virtual assistant world, they work harder than someone in the U.S. You may you may hate yeah. me for saying that, but I'm telling you, they're not spoiled. They're they hungry. They value their job. They value yeah. they yep. love what they're because really when they're making, you know, whatever they make over there is good money for them. Yeah. And, and the culture is a little different, right? They're, they're very family oriented. We, you know, I mean, think about this. We are, we can't wait to get out of the house, right? It's called what it is. We're younger and we're like, all right, I don't want to live with mom and dad. I want to go live by myself. Yeah. They traditionally stay within the family unit. They're really big in family units. So our business is like their business. So they take that to, they take that to heart and they really look after us in our, in our business, which is a really cool thing. Yeah. So how would you say, what would you say to someone that was wanting to hire a VA to, to create a good culture, even for that VA person on the team? Yep. I would, and, and this is something that a lot of people don't realize when you hire a virtual assistant, they're part of your team. You guys do a great job of this. You include them in your meetings. Yeah, we do. It, it's not too tough, right? To just no. get on a zoom call and say, all right, we're going to have a team meeting at this time. Just send them a link, include them in there. Um, well, the good thing about our VAs is they do a start of day report and an end of day report. So you know exactly what tasks they do. We also have a manager on top of that you guys work with um, that if you have any questions at all or you want extra training that the team will be able to help with it as well. So I think that's another another cool thing. But the answer to your question is it, it's just include them, right? It's it's your culture, right? Your business, every business has a different culture. Yeah. Right. You, you guys are, have a different gosh. business than I do. What's that? We do a lunch once a week with our with both of our teams and our bigger companies. Awesome. We, we'll do a virtual lunch. Um, we just had one before we came on this with you today, and that was for for Vester Pro for our coaching business. But then, you know, we'll do that. We have Alan many times. We'll join yeah. our call, or they'll they'll pop in just to say hi, and we talk. And you know, yeah. what's weather like over there in the Philippines today? Hot. <laughs> so, yeah, it's exa- yeah, hot, rainy. No. Yeah, hot, rainy. rainy. <laughs> but a good a good point there. So exactly, good idea. Just send them five bucks, and they could order some some lunch with you. So you right. could have a, a lunch, you know, meeting like that as well. So yeah, we do that very often as well. That's a, that's an awesome idea. So yep. so tell people. Uh, so so take us through maybe a day in in you guys with you using virtual assistants. You're doing a couple hundred deals a year. That's a yep. lot. They're doing a lot of work for you, and then you're closing. Tell people kind of how that structure looks because people are just getting started. Going two hundred. That makes no sense to me. So how how does it? Yep. 
using VAs and whatnot. How, how would somebody first get started using a VA? What might they yeah. use? I guess that so, was the question I wanted. I didn't know what yeah. question I wanted, but Amber corrected me. What a shocker. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great question because, I mean, think about this. None of us started doing 10 deals a month, right? You got to start by doing one deal a month, right? So, and that's a great question. So on that side of it, you got to look at, I look at lead generation first, right? No one can have a business unless they have leads, right? So we right. do, so we do uh, direct mail, we do text messaging, we do cold calling. So those are our three lead generators. We're adding in PPC, we're doing a bunch of that stuff, but we're, we're trying to learn that before we implement it. We're going to have a bunch of VAs implement it for us. So that's the idea along those lines. I just talked to our, uh, our marketing our, our marketing guy, Preston, from uh, my Riva company, from uh, the, the VA company. And he's creating a whole kind of a, a army of virtual assistants to do all of this stuff, which, which is going to be, you know, relate to our real estate business to do PPC and stuff like that. But I'll report that back to you guys when we're at CG and how that works out sure. um, through the time. But what we do is we'll look at, if you look at lead generation right now, in lead generation, the, the best way to, to generate leads is, is direct to seller, right? Because you could throw in an ad, right? You could do Google AdWords, but you're waiting for someone to call you. Yeah. So what we do is, and this is actually funny. You could see this. I don't know. You could see this. I'm, we have a presentation. You can't really see that, but I have a presentation uh, coming up for CG. So I'm mapping out exactly what that presentation looks like because it's funny even when you do presentations like that at, at uh, C, a collective genius for everybody who knows that's a uh, a mastermind that we're all we're all part of um and every every other quarter we all you know glenn you and amber have to put on a presentation we have to put on a presentation so it's hard to keep it new every time i know like, i know it's, it's very different. so i map this all out about uh about every resource that we use, all the way from Sharper to Trang to Brewer to Riva Global to so I'll lay out exactly what that looks like in in, in our in our office, how we went to from 166 deals to 225. So, but that's that's kind of where I'm going uh, all over the place when we're telling the story. But yeah, so we'll take a step back. So I would start looking at lead generation first. So if I'm if I'm newer and I really want to start looking at my business, you need leads. You need to get some sort of motivated seller to be able to get that put on your desk, right? So what we do is we go direct to seller. We go, we, we use PropStream. We also use, uh, I can't remember the dude, Josh Chen as well. Um, he's, a, he's a list provider within CG right now. I know uh, Chris Richter is also a good one. Um, you can get, so basically what we do is we get a, a list, pull it from yeah. PropStream or from the individual I just told you. Then you got to get them skip trace. The best opportunity, uh, skip tracing means the best opportunity to find a phone number that matches with that particular name, right? right. So it could be your cell phone, it could, it could be your landline. Those typically are the, are the two that, that you're going to get. So what we do then is we have, we do text messaging, cold calling, we have a team of VAs on both of them. So um, we upload all of those numbers into a texting platform. And then we also do the same thing into a calling platform. It gets all you know, TCPA, it's all do not call list, it's all scrub. Yeah. So then when we put it inside, you know, those two tools, we have a virtual assistant's text messaging and also calling. On the cold calling side, we have virtual assistants calling, just dialing all day long. So what happens at the end of the week, you'll have 50, 60, whatever leads that you get that'll come in and they'll go right to our sales floor. Um, and our sales floor is very good. It's, so it's acquisition. So if you're, if you're working by yourself, those leads are going to go to you. Yep. Right. As an example. So it's our job to make money off of each of those leads. If you have a real estate license, guess what? You can get a listing. Right. Um, if you're a wholesaler, get under contract to sign that deal. Right. There's obviously some other creative stuff. You could buy it and then list it on the market. You could fix and flip. You could do some other wholesale on the MLS, like, you know, some creative stuff that you can do. Um, Amber, you have a question there? Well, I was going to say, so for the people listening, this might sound a little overwhelming and a little complicated, but the, the reality of it is it's all system driven. So like it might take you a minute to get the, the setup in place, but like once you do, it's very plug and play. Like it's, it, right. it, just, it just runs like a, a well-oiled machine and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the Riva, like you guys train your, your VA so that it's real estate specific. Correct. So it's not like you're bringing on, like, like, it's not like we're bringing on a VA from, from Riva into our company that doesn't have a clue what we're doing. Like we don't have to train. Correct. Them. And and that's a good point. And I know when I talk, sometimes I talk fast from the Northeast, right? But 
it's very easy. The only thing you have to concentrate on is actually when the lead comes to you. So our virtual assistants will help with pulling a list, skip tracing, uploading into the tool, calling and texting. The only thing we have to worry about as an investor is when that lead comes to you, it's going to be your job to turn that into money. So right. Amber, I'm glad you actually uh, slowed me down in that one. So then it could really paint the easy and simple picture because that is true. It's exactly how that goes. And then, um, and I, I was looking at this, I think Glenn, you and I spoke about this before when we're in person, it's a lot of individuals when they're newer, they don't do coaching programs. They don't do training. They don't learn how to turn those leads into money because I mean, that's really where we all feed our families and families. You have to be able to convert all of those leads that you get into, you know, whatever you're going to convert into. I think it helps so much to have, you know, when you have the right person on your team, forget if it's virtual or in person, the right person will take hardly any time to get to speed, right? Yes. It's the right person. We're having a conversation in our coaching business where we had a huge event and we we're trying to figure out, okay, how do we, you know, how do we train these new people? And one of our marketing director, who's amazing, he's been in the game for a while. He said at a really high level, he said, there's virtually no training for those guys. They know what to do. And I was like, yeah, yeah they just have to know a little bit about our culture. Same thing. I think it was yeah. not too long ago. And I don't remember her name, which is bad of me. I just don't know all the, the team members where teams kind of getting bigger. And so there, but we hired someone from Reva. I remember that, mm -hmm. that our, our yeah. my COO and my, our, our director of sales, they hired somebody from Reva. And I think it was to do cold calling. And yep. um, all of a sudden, all I know is that in the first week, they said, oh, she's a game changer. She's a, she's a rock star. And so th yeah. it was like, all of a sudden, like leads were coming in instantly. And we, you know, I think people think, well, I have to train them. I have to give them a script. Well, you might. Yeah. You get, they have a lot of things they know what they're doing anyway. And if they're good at what they yeah. do and they come on your team, it doesn't take long to, to convert that to real money. And I think it's important to remember too, like just because you're – even if they're not the right fit, don't let that discourage you, you know, maybe just move on to the next person, but that's no different yeah. than if you hired somebody right in your backyard. Correct. And, yep. and Same exact thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I think uh, the cold call, so you, you nailed it too on the cold calling side, because we train them on cold calling. It's just, you just change the script. It's, it's like, same thing. If, if you have someone in your office, they're going to be calling, right? You could change the script. They already know how to call because they've been trained on calling, right? So if it's calling to uh, get your show up right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly right. Right. That's yeah. exactly right. So you, can, yeah, you, um, you can't train on being tough enough to be on the, cause that's tough. That's a, doing right. vocal is a tough gig. You know, you did it for a year and a half. I, I oh. started my first business at 19. I knocked on doors. I just did that. That's how I built yeah. my arm company when I first got started. So I know that knocking on doors is not fun. It's a tough and, and cold calling is not easy. So I would, oh, knock on doors from 10, oh, I would, I would skip trace and call until like seven, eight o'clock at night. I'm like, Oh, it be, it wears you down. You will quit. If you don't yes. outsource it. I mean, you guys know that you will quit this business if you keep if you continue to do all those little things that beat you up. You got to yeah. outsource that to a virtual system. Yeah, I think, and once you do it, it's one of those things where you're like, God, and the investment is really so small compared to what you get in return for. Correct. It, right? And Correct. I think it's also important that you just touched on a point. Like you're going to quit if you're not good at it. So when, when you're a brand new investor, you're wearing all the hats. You're doing everything, mm -hmm. even stuff that you're not necessarily good at. Or you might be good at it, but you don't like it. It's not fulfilling. And I think that was the interesting thing about doing the PI index is it, it almost gives you permission to do what you're good at and get out of the way. Right. You know, you guys yeah. are both average. <laughs> so you have, you, you, you're easily, uh, you're a distractor. Yep. Like, <laughs> squirrel, right? Squirrel. <laughs> yes, exactly. Shiny object, squirrel. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so as you're, you know, maybe you do have to do those things when you're brand, brand new, but yep. as, you, as you grow in your business, the need to start filling in those gaps and, and yeah. having people do the things that you're not good at. Right. And, and, and let, let me add to that. Let me add, yeah, no. And I'll add to that too. Cause when we all started, we, we felt the same way, right? You're doing everything. Oh, yeah. And the one thing that Pat, and, and I'll give Pat record a, a shout out here. One thing he told me is like, listen, you have, no matter what you do, you gotta, you gotta document. And this is how you guys teach your coaching program. Right. You've documented everything you did in your real estate business, which very successful, right? hundred plus deals every year, blah, 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 blah. Right. You documented everything. Now you could then teach somebody to then do it. But that's the only way to be a business owner. You have to do those little things. And it starts obviously with you, you know, alone. And yep. then you could build off from there and build a team. The funny part is, I think that once you start to honestly go with sharper and doing that PI, I've done plenty of things in the in the past. Like I knew my I know my personality, what it was generally. When I heard the Maverick, when I heard it was okay, 
to just be a visionary. That for some odd reason that made me comfortable. Like I, I had this comfort feeling like, okay, it's okay to just be yourself. You don't have to do everything. Cause I don't know about you. Like I, as a maverick, I just want to get stuff done. Like sometimes I'm like, just let's do this. I'll do this. And then I cause chaos. And so one of the books I read was who, not how you ever read that book. Mm-hmm. And that book, I have not read it yet. No, it's a great book. It's it's pretty much everything you need done. Instead of saying, how do I do this? You say, well, who do I get to do this? Who can I, do? Yeah. I think, yeah. and I think when you have access to VAs and people like you that have access to that, that's a great mm-hmm. thing because like you said, you have to ask yourself, can this, you know, who can get this done for me? And yeah. maybe they don't have to spend 50 grand a year to have it done. Maybe they don't have right. to have the headache of having an actual employee and W2 paperwork and all that nonsense that goes along with that. Maybe somebody else like like Bob has handled all that headache for me, right? And maybe yeah. maybe I can just find the the who to get my how to get my how done. I yeah. think that makes a big difference. And when you're for me, I even look at new businesses now. I'm like, okay, well, who who can I work with to get that done? Right. So I'm thinking differently because of that. And that's really what VAs is. It's really just right. finding the right who to get it done. And I think the beautiful thing is too that real estate is something that you can start on the side. I mean, a lot of our students do this on right. the side of their current job. So if you know, maybe, maybe it's not a, a matter of, I don't like doing that. Maybe it's just a matter of not having time to do it. Okay. So for somebody yep. that's even brand new to be able to outsource that at, at, a, at a minimal cost is yep. awesome. That, that, that might be their way to get into real estate investing. Did the COVID world open up for you? Did things change with more people, more people wanting um, virtual assistance or was it kind of the same prior? You know, it's, you know, it's funny. It's like at the beginning, when it first happened, everything kind of like, it tightened up, and I mean, even as business owners, let's call it what it is, we're like, uh oh, oh yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. we didn't know what's, we oh, didn't know yeah. what's going to happen. So we're all, I mean, it, all of us were thinking the same thing, and then all of a sudden, you know, it, things got comfortable with not being in the same office or the same room. So then it started expanding, expanding. So COVID actually, for business wise, it was very good for us on the business front, right? Yeah. Also on the real estate side, so on two different businesses, I had the Riva VA side, and I also had the we have the med side, we have the real estate side, and we also have the, uh, you know, our, our flipping company, if you will, flipping, yeah. investing, wholesaling, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I think you said it right. Like it, the, everybody got comfortable on Zoom, right? Everybody, yep. all of a sudden things changed overnight. And when, when we, you know, for our coaching business, we were doing live hotel, you know, ballroom kind of thing. And mm-hmm. then I remember saying, I remember looking at Amber saying, my dream is over. Like I, we can't do hotel. We're in New York. Everything was shut down. I'm like, I can't even... When's this going to end? Right. And then, so when we went to a virtual model, we did one. We did one of them with like thirty some students there, and it was like, "Holy crap, this works!" And yeah. so we figured, out, we figured out the nuances to make it interactive and live and fun and all that stuff. Yeah. And I, now, and to really connect with people. Yeah, we really connect yeah. with people over Zoom, which is crazy. Yeah, we really connect. The only thing I don't do is give you a high five or a hug at the end of the day. Other than that, I'm right there right. with you. And yeah. it's really, and you, obviously they get to go home with their family, they get to go home with my family, you know, at night and it's been amazing. Yeah. So, but COVID has sort of allowed that we all, you know, when I first, I said, listen, we're, let's be the pioneers in doing this virtually. I said, we just want to yeah. really go hard at it. And we, we really have worked and I think we're getting, I think we're up there as far as. Hey, and and I, I think it's actually really impressive too, because you look at, you know, a lot of individuals that had coaching programs were like, all right, what do I do now? Because you're, you're literally recreating a whole industry. Like that's what yeah. you guys did. I mean, I, I think if I put my business hat on, I think that's inc- like, I, that could be a whole different podcast, but yeah. really impressive on, um, you know, the, the changes that you guys did in your business. Same thing with real estate, right? You have to always be open to change, right? There may be a new tool to drive in leads or maybe a new strategy. There may be a new whatever it is, right? Think about this. Right now we're in an industry where interest rates are going up, right? Now yeah. now buyers today want products that are actually fixed up. They yeah. weren't before, but today yeah. now we're going back in that world where, hey, guess what? It's an opportunity to do fix and flips again, right? Rather than, you know, there's going to be multiple bids on your house and you you just throw a sign in. Like, this, that's okay. It's just, it's just the stuff that you guys yeah. teach. It's, it's what's happening right now. A lot of the time. Yeah. 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 We had our first, yeah, we had our first yesterday. We had to give our first uh, $12,000 roof credit. I was like, wow, no one's asked for yeah. credit for years. <laughs> Same thing for us. Same thing for us. I'm like, all I'm right. Like, oh, no. Here we're going back to that again. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Same exact thing. <laughs> no. no, I know the game. Well, this has been great. Tell people how they can reach you, how they can find you, connect with you. Absolutely. You can check out Reva Global, R-E-V-A global.com. You can check us on Facebook, uh, Instagram. 
whatever else, LinkedIn. Um, you can email me direct, Bob at Reva Global, R-E-V-A Global.com. And then, uh, yeah, pretty easy, pretty simple. So, so our, our podcast is a real estate of mind. And we've talked about yep. a lot of stuff and mindset. And obviously, I think we think a lot of life in a lot of ways. What do you do to keep yourself strong through those crappy days? Because even though you're a positive guy, I know yep. that you have those days where you're like, oh, my God. Like, what yep. do you have those moments in life where you're like, oh, my God. What do you do to keep yourself mentally strong? You know, and I think I think listening to podcasts are very important. But it's to me, it's really having the right people around you, right? You can't have... Stay away from all the naysayers. Stay away from all those. There's too many of those idiots in the world. Right? Just stay away from them. And, and again, some of them are family members. So sometimes it's difficult, but you've got to move yourself away from those people and surround yourself. It could be one person. Guess what? Feel a little beat up that day? Call Jim. Call Billy. Call George. Call me. Call you. Whoever it is. Call your coach. Right? That's yeah. why another reason why having a coaching program is huge. Call your coach. You need somebody. You need a mentor, my yeah. opinion, to always just stay out of that garbage, all that crap that, that is around. Yeah. Awesome yeah. stuff. Well, Bob, thanks. This has been great today. I know I learned a lot. Guys, if you want to learn how to outsource your business and you want to start getting VAs, reach out to Bob. They have an awesome team. Like I said, we use them. So we've been using them for geez, a couple, the, the two or three years now. And Ben, yep. uh, we keep getting more people in our team. We keep outsourcing more stuff. So Awesome way to grow and scale. Yeah, for sure. So Bob, again, thanks for being here, buddy. We appreciate awesome. it. Guys, we'll see you on thanks the next podcast. Awesome. Thanks.